Does your son or daughter drop their hands? I have three drills that are gonna be able to help them stop doing that. But before we dive into that, we have to understand, first of all, why it's happening in the first place. Let's flash back to the first time you ever picked up a bat. Do you think you were strong enough to hold it? Absolutely not. But did you swing it anyways? Absolutely. So how'd you have to swing it? Did you maintain perfect form? No. You lugged it around and swung it however you possibly could get it across that plate. So that's what's happening now with your son or daughter. That's what happened when they first started playing. So now those habits have carried over into today. We aren't going to be able to fix it by just saying elbow up. So how do we fix it? We have to create good habits through practice. Here's the first drill. All we need is some slightly deflated ball. I use a dodgeball here, but just about any ball that's kind of deflated is gonna work really good. So set their feet, take this ball, have them set it on their shoulder, connect this bat to their shoulder. From here, make sure they feel loosey-goosey. We don't want them to feel too cramped up right here. Now we wanna line up our swing, but we don't wanna line up our swing with our hands because that ball's gonna fall out. We need to line up the swing with our hips. Tell them to try to turn their belly button towards the pitcher without that ball falling out. You're gonna notice that ball stays connected to that shoulder. Have them do that twice without swinging. And on the third one, let it eat. Make sure though, after that swing's over, that ball is falling this way, not this way. Time for drill number two. This drill is a great replacement for drill one if we don't have a ball at hand. So I want you to pretend that there's a string from this bat to your shoulder. When we load, we can't break this string, making sure even when we load, that string stays close and tight to ourselves in our shoulder. So when we load, we try to hide our hands behind our ear. If our hands go this way, our swing is now long, those hands are going to fall. So we're going to do those same two lineups we did in the first drill. When we line up to that swing, make sure they're lining up with their belly button, not their hands. Hide behind our ear, line up. Make sure they look for this string. That string is close, good. If we're way out here, we have these floppy arms. Not good. Two lineups, one swing. For a third drill, we're gonna do what I call the rubber band drill. Have you ever shot a rubber band before? Let's say we take this rubber band and you barely pull it back. Is it gonna go anywhere? No. Let's say we take this rubber band and we pull it all the way back. It's gonna fly. The same thing goes with our rubber band and our swing. I need to pretend that we have a rubber band going from my front toe to my back elbow. Take your front foot to your back foot, start tall. From here, I want us to go down the elevator then pull our rubber band apart. We wanna really stretch this rubber band big, but when we land on our toe, we wanna to freeze. Down the elevator, stretch the rubber band. See, when I freeze, I'm nice and balanced and ready to fire. Their hands should still be close to their ear and close to their shoulder. If you see their hands falling, make sure we correct that. So now we do one pause, one fire. If we really stretch that rubber band and keep it in our ear and let the belly button do the work, that swing is gonna be quick and without our hands falling. Use all of these cues. Hide the hands behind the ear, stretch the rubber band. Any cues that are able to help them put that together in their head is what we wanna use. Constantly remind them of these cues so they understand what they're trying to accomplish. These three drills are my favorite to stop casting. I hope this can help your son or daughter as well. I'm DR Hitting. Thanks for watching.